not Chris Paul. I reiterate, I am not Chris Paul. But saying that, he is not me neither. So you right there. So you're saying you're not Chris Paul? I like the confidence. Safe to say the new Clippers point guard is just as spicy as the old one. I'm Michael, she's Jamel, and welcome to the best 60 minutes of your day. What's good? Well, I'll tell you. The Lakers, at least the Summer League Lakers, but are they so good that they're back, like Magic Johnson says? Plus, an NBA Hall of Famer is back for another run in the championship. All that's later, but we start with bad news for one of Major League Baseball's best teams and best players. Yeah, Astro shortstop Carlos Correa was put on the disabled list today uh, with a torn ligament to his left thumb. He is expected to miss six to eight weeks. Correa said there's no timetable on when he'll have surgery. But for a reference point, Mike Trout had the same injury earlier this season. And Trout, after he had surgery, missed seven weeks. So how big of a loss is this for the first place Astros? Well, the 22-year-old Correa is in the midst of a career year, ranking well ahead of every other shortstop in on-base percentage, slugging, home runs, and RBI. He also ranks third among all position players in wins above replacement behind Aaron Judge and teammate Jose Altuve. And with that, we welcome in Pedro <laughs> Gomez. Hey, so Michael, glad you were here. On well, you're wearing a tie. I got to wear a tie. Oh, come on. We go cash <laughs> on here sometimes. Now, the Astros, they're already up 15 and a half yep. games to the AL West. But what kind of impact will this injury have on the team? Well, it's it, because they have a 15 and a half game lead, it's not going to be as hard as if they had a two or three game lead. And I spoke to Astros general manager Jeff Luno actually about less than an hour ago and asked him that very question. He said, you know what, this is one of the reasons that we're happy that we got off to such a big start. Right now, the Astros have 69 games left. If they were to go 34 and 35, which I don't think they're going to, right. they would still end up with 96 wins, which would be good enough Not to win. <laughs> now, you're, you're losing the heart and soul of your team, though. Okay. Even though Carlos Correa is so young, he has become the true leader of this Astros club, and that was from day one when he got here. He, he really let his presence be known and said, I'm okay carrying the weight on my shoulders. This is a guy who, when he was in the minor leagues in high A, injured himself, and when the team, Lancaster, California, was playing for the championship in the California League, he asked the Astros if he could fly cross country just to be in the dugout with his teammates, wow. even though he had missed the last two months of the season yeah. because of an injury. It tells you the dedication that he has to his teammates. What it means, though, is Marwin Gonzalez yeah, so I was ask Alex the Bregman. What's the backup? Okay. Yeah, the, the plan is that Marwin Gonzalez, who's kind of a super utility player, yep. um, think of a Tony Phillips from a few years ago, um, can play almost anywhere. Well, Marwin Gonzalez has played everywhere for the Astros, but he's played more games at short than anywhere else in, in his career. And he is a very, very solid, dependable guy. I mean, almost 20 home runs. This is a, this is a legit super utility player who... Manager A.J. Hinch basically has to have in the lineup every night, just at different spots. There's also Alex Bregman, who was a tremendous shortstop at LSU, who's been playing third base for the Astros, a former first-round pick a few years ago. He can play shortstop as well. So if there's ever a good time for a bad break, it's this one with this team being as good as it is. With this much time left. All right, we appreciate you, Pedro. Thank you, man. Kirk Cousins is just a cool cat. He's cool with team president Bruce Allen calling him Kurt. (laughs) <laughs> cool with Allen putting their business in the street when they didn't agree to a long-term deal yesterday. Cool with being the first QB to play under the franchise tag in consecutive seasons. A lot of bread tends to make one unbothered. Here's Cousins on why he's cool with playing this thing year to year. I would love to be with the Redskins long-term. I could play for the Redskins for the next 10 years on one-year deals. Doesn't mean I don't want to be with the Redskins and don't want to be with this team. I just think the structure of the NFL is such that one-year deals are the best option. It's a moving target. You know, there are all kinds of pieces that are changing. And as a result, I think it's best to just continue to reevaluate each year and see where you're at and, and, and where you want to be. By no means does it mean I've, I've you know, tried to look, look away from the Redskins to go to a, a different place. That's not where my mind is. My mind is just on gathering more information and then seeing where we are. What do you think of how Kirk Cousins is playing this? He's playing it perfectly. And, I and, agree. And, and look, he's also, uh, Washington's also at a bit of a mismatch because they always seem to find a way to mess up even the slightest things. I mean, if you, from Bruce Allen with that video message, uh, calling him by the wrong name. And I know for some people that may seem like a small thing, but they've exposed themselves. And the fact that they chose to air their dirty laundry, as long as Kirk Cousins continues to play it classy, then... He's going to have a lot of people, as he already does, rooting for him. I mean, think about this, Mike. Usually in professional sports, we talk about how players don't – what they don't deserve. This is one of those occasions, a rare occasion, where – 
people want to see Kirk Cousins get paid. And that speaks to how brilliantly he's played this situation. Well, I like what he's saying as it relates to playing the NFL game or taking the short-term contract looking at the big picture. Richard Sherman recently was the latest to suggest that if the NFL is ever going to get anywhere close to the NBA's level as it relates to player empowerment and guaranteed contracts and this, that, and the other, they have to strike. Well, Kirk Cousins is in a position where he doesn't just have to set the market for quarterbacks. He can set the blueprints on how star players, particularly quarterbacks, let's call it quarterback privilege, right. practice that quarterback privilege. He can afford to take it year to year, literally and figuratively. When you got 24 million or 28 or even 35 coming to you next year, you can take this thing year to year knowing that Kyle Shanahan or Sean McVay will break you off something real proper like next year if the Redskins don't want to sign you long term. See, so it's about knowing your worth. And I add Le'Veon Bell to this. Even at a volatile position like running back, he's saying, I'm undervalued. And I'm not going to take a contract just because the NFL, the not-for-long league, has brainwashed us into thinking that we can't be like LeBron James or we can't be like Chris Paul. We can't bet on ourselves. We, we know that we're a player or an injury away from getting cut, so let's take the, the, the first thing they give us that gives us long-term security. And not to mention, I love how Kirk Cousins is reversing that thing like Boomerang, reversing it on him right now because all we talked about is, oh, well, he's, oh, he's that franchise's quarterback, but maybe not a franchise quarterback. They don't love him enough. They like him, but they don't love him. He's like, well, I don't love y'all that much either. Right. I want to see, see if y'all got what it takes for me to commit to y'all long term because, once again, I know my worth and I could go somewhere else and be happier than I could here. This is one of, this is one of the few times when I would say a guy saying it's not about the money actually buy it because well, he knows he's got the money coming does he want it from them th that's a really big question and also you know just big picture I think in the past and understandably so I mean we understand this uh is that when guys complained about the franchise tag we I, I certainly and you did as well understood why they did but the thing is Fans don't want to hear players complain about money, especially typically, no. typically they don't, especially when you look at, uh, especially with quarterbacks, what they're making year to year and what that average, uh, how, what that means for him. And so he has been able to shift this entire narrative so that he looks like the underpaid one, which, again, when we're talking about quarterbacks, that's really hard to do. All right. After reportedly being involved in a Dallas bar fight, all while under being under investigation for a domestic violence accusation. Today's Ezekiel Elliott news is he will appeal a misdemeanor conviction for speeding in which he was clocked at going 170 mile per hour zone. He has spoken with his boss, Jerry Jones, who says Zeke still learning on the job. Because of uh, 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 his style, personality, uh, it's uh, like a rock star wherever he goes in terms of attention. Certainly anybody that's experienced that knows that takes some uh, getting used to. You have to uh, uh, learn uh, many aspects of that. Zeke is uh, uh, evolving and uh, being subject to uh, needing to learn how to deal with uh, the media and social media the way it is today. Now, is Jerry Jones just trying to be reasonable about this or is he being a little bit of an apologist? Both. Mm -hmm. Both. I mean, he's always going to be an apologist for his players. I mean, he uh, empowers them and many would say enables them to do what they do in Dallas. But I think he does have a point, which I, I thought Ezekiel Elliott had come to realize himself that everything's magnified in Dallas. Everything's bigger in Big D. Um, look, when, you, when we look at this situation, you got an NFL investigation that we don't know what they found or haven't found. And maybe they haven't found anything, but they may still punish him just based on the NFL standards. So we don't know what he did or didn't do as it relates to domestic violence in Ohio. We don't know what happened in this bar. We don't know much of anything other than the one thing we saw in video was him exposing a young lady on St. Patrick's Day, right? We've all been caught speeding. I know I've been caught speeding. That's not to excuse it. That's not to say it's okay. But I've been caught uh, recklessly driving before. So I'm not about to sit up here and throw glass, uh, bricks from this glass house when it comes to that. What I'm simply saying is, when you look at Ezekiel Elliott and you look at all of his situations within the context of it being the Cowboys and the off the field situations that they have with other players, yeah, it is being blown out of proportion. I think people are presuming guilt or presuming that he's somebody based off of connecting dots. We don't quite have a full picture of each of those individual sets of circumstances. Yeah, but what changed all of this is the fact that the NFL investigation has gone on longer than I think most people anticipated. Mm -hmm. It's for what he's being accused of, which is domestic violence. Right. 
which obviously is a serious issue in this society. And it's just the fact you talk about what we don't know. What we do know is I'm hearing about Ezekiel Elliott for the wrong things way too much. OK, whether he's we don't know what he's done or not done. But well, the fact you is hearing? you're hearing accusations. But the fact is, the it doesn't matter, Mike, because if they're associations you comp- doesn't matter. You compile no? it all. No, it doesn't matter, because if every time I'm hearing about you is for something not good, I'm not saying that that makes me question whether or not uh, Ezekiel Elliott is a good fit for a Cowboys or what kind of person he is. I don't know Ezekiel Elliott. What I'm saying is if every headline is caught speeding, uh, we saw the video with the young lady accused of being in a bar fight like that. That's not all good. No, okay? I'm not saying it is. But a bar fight is one thing. Let me all, all I'll say on a domestic violence situation is this. Do we know what the NFL actually found or do we know that the know. NFL or do we know that the NFL is whatever really it looking, is? It's not enough for them to leave them alone. Are they that's looking for sure. extra hard for something, given how many times they've dropped the ball? Whether, when it comes to Ray Rice or Josh Brown, is, this, is he just going to have to be the fall, their fall guy? There's that phrase again, their fall guy for their missteps as it relates to this. Because the one thing I will say, too, Jerry Jones might be tolerating it right now, but he said it himself. The best ability, and many have said this, the best ability is availability. If you're not available, he'll find another running back because he's not going to let you learn this lesson on his time, right. on his dime. This right. lesson about you're in Dallas and it's magnified. And it's about professionalism, too. And I do understand where Jerry Jones was coming from, is that he's still a young player. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to understand that he's not going to come into this with a veteran mentality. He has to grow and learn. He did Ohio State. He did. And, and, and that's, under the spotlight. that's the other thing I'll reject. that's a big-time yeah. program, yeah. but it is another level no when you're in Dallas. No question. Uh, Michael Vick was the latest to chime in with a blister take on why Colin Kaepernick remains unsigned by an NFL team following his national anthem protest last season. Appearing on Fox Sports yesterday, Vic offered some advice to Kaepernick about how to repair his image. The first thing we got to get Colin to do is cut his hair. You know, I mean, <laughs> listen, I'm not up here to try to be politically correct, but, you know, even if he puts cornrows in it, I, I don't think he should represent himself, you know, in that way in terms of you know, just a hairstyle. Just go clean cut. You know, why not? You know, you're already dealing with a lot, a lot of controversy surrounding this issue. Now, naturally, Vic's comments created its own controversy. And this morning, he walked it back. Uh, he tweeted Kaepernick's hair was not the reason he wasn't in the NFL and that he does believe at some point this season, Kaepernick will be signed by an NFL team. Colin Kaepernick, though, uh, he obviously noticed Michael Vick's comments and he followed it up. Uh, with this, he tweeted out the definition of the Stockholm Syndrome. Well, hmm. <laughs> so Mike, what's your reaction to all of this? Well, I don't want to waste our precious time on the source or the setting for this silly suggestion. But I do have a suggestion, though. I got, I got one. I got, I got a gift, actually. This is for you, Colin Kaepernick. This is what I want you to The next time, if and when somebody calls you to come in for a workout or a visit, I want you to put this in the back of that afro. Go all the way with it, okay? (laughs) Why should he have to change his hair? Why should he have to conform with his body of work? Because, see, the reason is, and this is why I can pull this out and say, wear this to your next interview in the NFL. It'll never happen. And the reason nobody else is going to call him is because they they can't sell Colin Kaepernick. The owner of the Giants, John Mara, suggested this recently about how he's never seen anything like the fan feedback about you had better not sign Colin Kaepernick after his anthem protest. You can sell a redemption or reclamation project as it relates to an athlete, a football player, particularly a black football player, because people are much more willing to buy a black man as violent or aggressive, especially for purposes of their entertainment. What they cannot buy is unapologetic black man. They don't have a problem. They not, even the ones that necessarily don't have a problem with black people don't like blackness. And what we're talking about is, hey, conform, cut your hair, because that is a symbol of being militant. That is a symbol for being proud of being African-American. That's a symbol for being for, for your protest. So if you cut that, you can somehow make people more comfortable, which we, you and I both know it won't. No, um, my one of my I had many issues with what Michael Vick had to say, but probably the, among the bigger ones was that he framed this entire his entire uh, comments around the fact that Colin Kaepernick had something to which in which he should apologize for. Right. See, I'm sure he was channeling his own experience because he had to go on that redemption tour that you just spoke about. 
And yes, his hair. right. And Michael Vick, yes, you had something to apologize for. Mm -hmm. You had an image you needed to repair. Colin Kaepernick has nothing to apologize for. His entire protest is about bettering this country and bettering humanity. Right. So you mean to tell me that he has to apologize for that? To who and for what? Right. And you're right, Mike. I mean, Colin Kaepernick, look, we've been saying this for months. He's not getting back into the NFL. They're not comfortable with him. They don't like his outspokenness. And he shouldn't conform in order to no. do so. And, and, and look, a lot of people out there, you guys can continue to, to point to his hair, to point to alleged demands about money, alleged demands about role. We know what it is right. because if it were related to just football, all right, Colin Kaepernick would be in the league because there are far worse quarterbacks, as we've seen, be signed by other teams. That go, but that goes back to that they can't sell it. Because if you sign Colin Kaepernick, you go to a press conference explaining it because he's not apologizing, because he didn't do anything wrong, your yeah. fan base, some of your fan base is going to be like, well, you're co-signing this. Again, you can say, hey, we vetted the domestic abuse, abuser. We vetted the animal abuser. We, we trust that this was a one-time thing. Whereas Colin Kaepernick possesses, wait for it, a quote-unquote character flaw in the eyes of a lot of people. But see, it always comes down to, there are two sets of circumstances when it comes to moving goalposts, okay? From a football standpoint, he's not good enough, because Vic even said this, he's not good enough, it's his play. But Pete Carroll said he was a starter in this league. Right. Okay? Well, you know what, Colin, it's not about his protests, but... We don't want the distraction from our second string quarterback, you know. So, so which one is it exactly? Then he's a bad teammate, despite the fact that the 49ers, uh, exactly. his teammates gave him the highest award that exactly. you can get within the we organization. Want, we want you to be seen and not heard, but go do an interview and prove and tell us how committed you are to football. All these different things that he has to do that nobody else has to do. But even when it comes to the subject of protest, it's always been that. Well, you got to dress a certain way. You got to assume a certain posture. You got to protest a certain you way. You got to protest in a neat and orderly fashion. Don't, don't, don't dare up inconvenience everybody with the form of your protest it's always you, know, you got to look a certain way dress a certain way speak a certain way in order to be respected that's that damn respectability politics that michael vick and that other guy were out there perpetuating yesterday so this conversation it wasn't worth justifying or dignifying or giving attention to the sources of this conversation but the suggestion in and of itself remains problematic that somehow if he cuts his hair he'll be more digestible, he'll be more acceptable. Well, it's and just, that's just completely it's much wrong. like, uh, as African Americans are often told, if we just uplift our communities. If that's we another just, thing, it's always before. If we, if we just before you that, want to talk to about earn, police brutality, we have to earn black on the black right crime. to be respected, Precisely. right? Precisely, we always got there's humanity. this checklist. There's this checklist that they keep getting added to, mm. to do things before you can have equal rights. The Clippers signed 611 center Willie Reed today to give them more rim protection. He backed up Hassan Whiteside with the Heat last year. The New York Clippers also introduced six of their new players today. Montrez Harrell, Patrick Beverly, Jawan Evans, and Darius Stonewell, and Sam Decker. Here is Doc on how the Clippers plan to move on without Chris Paul. Emphasis well, on ball movement, you know. Uh, that's one of the things, for the most part, that I've always preached. You know, uh, with, with Chris's skill, you wanted to take advantage of what he could do, and that you know he was a ball, a guy that needed the ball to make plays, and he did it so well. You kind of changed to do that. Uh, but if you look at my work uh, historically, it's been more of a ball movement, uh, cut basketball team, and that's what we're going to get back to doing. What you think of the squad with LCP? They're interesting. I don't know if they're playoff interesting in the Western Conference, but as best as you can salvage a bad situation, they lost the Hall of Fame, All-NBA point guard, and they got different, really different and really interesting. Different is not necessarily good. I didn't say and better. Different and interesting are not necessarily good. No. I mean, right. look, they made the best of a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And it's, what's interesting, though, is with, 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 with what Doc said, a lot of people were reading into that as shade against like Chris Paul, like he was taking a shot. Right. I think he was just simply saying that they now have to win differently. I'm glad you picked up on right. that. Right, because of course they do. I mean, right. they, they lost one of the best point guards in the game, if not the best in a lot of people's And when you have opinion. Chris Paul, you let him dominate the ball. Precisely. So it makes a lot of sense, especially with the way that he can make guys better. Look, I like that they seem to have a plan and a philosophy because that's always important because some teams get put together and they're all over the place. But clearly, they're going to have to start putting values on different things. I think they put a lot of value when they had Chris Paul on their offense. But now we see them becoming a little bit more complete. If you well, know. they had spurts where they were really good defensively. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't you know, to, so to wasn't. shade them and say that they didn't play defense. Right. But. Honestly, it's really about can these guys stay healthy because I like Blake Griffin as a facilitator. Gallinari has always been this big tease. A lot of times he's been hurt. But their front court is pretty loaded, right? So if you got Patrick Beverly, you know, holding it down defensively, Lou Williams giving you uh, buckets off the bench. They got this EuroLeague MVP that everybody's raving about his passing. 
there's just there's a depth to them and maybe just maybe not having that whole Clippers weight on them, which having Chris Paul added to. And, and the, this team, I don't know if anybody's going to be holding the playoff failures and shortcomings and not getting out of the second round against this particular team. No, Again, the expectation is much different. Right. They may not be able to get to the playoffs at all. But once they get there, if they get there in the loaded Western Conference, they're not going to have that burden of trying to atone for past failures. And maybe they play with more freedom. Lakers also introduced Contavious Caldwell Pope this afternoon. Afternoon. Not pictured because we are talking about last night. The Lakers didn't have Lonzo Ball, but they had Kyle Kuzma to give them 30 and 10 and a Vegas Summer League championship. It's Summer League, but let Lakers nation live, Jamel. It's been a minute. He was the game's MVP, but Lonzo was the league's MVP. And for perspective's sake, here are your last four Vegas Summer League MVPs. Hmm. Presented without comment. <laughs> right. Because I, I don't know what to make of it. It just it's just facts. You know, Lonzo was the second overall pick. Those guys weren't. Anyway, Magic thinks Ball and the rest of his boys balling out is the beginning of brighter, more banner-filled days in L.A. Proclaimed the late show back last night and doubled down a little while ago. We're going to have an exciting team. I tell you what, I would not want to miss a Laker game this season because it's going to be exciting every single night. Just like we saw in Summer League, it was exciting. Every game It's going to happen in the regular season, too. It's going to be amazing. So, we're excited. We're ready to get going. There was a time when the Israelites were wandering in the desert and all of a sudden bread came down from heaven. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what today feels like for us to have KCP join. Did he go Israelite? Okay. Okay. I, I, okay. I got it. I, got, I get Laid it on a from. little thing. Nobody expected KCP to be available. No. And he's a good, you know, you're a yeah. Pistons fan. He's a good he's player a good to get player. him over, what, a one year deal? Yep. He's Are they laying on a little too <laughs> yes. thick? Are they going too far? Lakers back, bread he's from really heaven. Too, bread, too much going manna on. Manna from heaven, too much too bowls and fishes. I mean, they are, but it's understandable. Mm-hmm. Um, we just talked about the Clippers a moment ago. And while the Clippers, as you said, look different and interesting, and they're clearly trying to put something together of what they have left, the Clippers. And just that quickly have become irrelevant, just that quick, because the Lakers have a plan. And more importantly, they have Magic Johnson leading their plan, perhaps their most beloved Laker. They have cap space coming. They have uh, a young developing star in Lonzo Ball, who after that first game where he looked a little rough, has shown, I know it's summer league, but... Again, if you know when the guy has it, right? You know when he has it. Correct. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and trust me, had Lonzo not played well in summer league, be be, the everybody would be talking about it and, and, and going in on him uh, more so than people did just because of his dad. But they they have something, and this is why those LeBron to the Lakers rumors are started. Like they have juice and sizzle again. See, I mean, yeah. they're the Lakers. They always do to a certain extent, but now you can see it. Now you can see the light at the end of this dark One tunnel. One thing the Lakers and Lakers Nation, by extension, never have is patience. Again, that's the standard, so I understand it. But they're the most are-we-there-yet team in the NBA when it comes to— Okay, that hasn't been the question the last couple of seasons because the, the answer was uh, not even close. No, but they, were, they never trusted the process. They right. never felt like we got to get bad to get good again, which is what we're seeing manifest itself right now with these young players. It was always, oh, we're going to sign everybody this offseason. We're going to get LeBron, we're going to get Carmelo, we're going to get them all to come to L.A. It'll be all good. We're going to just form a super team through free agency as opposed to building it from the ground up. So the only thing I would say is, I say this affectionately and respectfully, (laughs) I thought that was a little bit of Twitter Magic Johnson last night, saying that the (laughs) Lakers are back, you know? I mean, yes, they may be a fun team to watch, a a, a very exciting young team to watch, but are they... Are they all the way back? No, they're on their way. And there's certainly light at the end of the tunnel. So do you back the like have been playoffs? Part, the Red Seas have been parted. Kind of They've been freed from bondage, okay, <laughs> okay. From, the, from the bondage of the old regime. And now maybe they're on their way to the promised land, okay, to keep, keep biblical with this thing. But a lesson until they get stars to add to this potential young star that is Lonzo Ball. They're not ready to be back in contention. They just have a culture. Look, they needed to win last night. We've won 91 games over four years. You need to feel what winning is like. But when you, what, they are, what they are winning at is the game of accumulating assets. Kuzma, Nance Jr. I mean, Kuzma go, looked really good. That's that 27th pick mm-hmm. from the Nets that people was, thought was just a throw-in, okay? They obviously kept Clarkson. Ingram looks good. So all the people that were saying, hurry up and trade for Paul George, no, this is why I said, no, you have to do this the right way. Keep the young players, let them develop, and then let the free agent come in for the cherry on well, top. But that's why there's so much understandable optimism, uh, even though, again, they did lay it on a little thick, is because they are following a different plan from what they, all, from what they have previously done. 
And that means that there's real leadership there. And so I think if you're a Laker fan, I understand why you're super excited about everything. Now, according to NFL Network, Panthers owner Jerry Richardson is meeting with former GM Marty Herney today about becoming the team's interim GM for the 2017 season. In his previous stand, Herney helped the team get to the 2004 Super Bowl. He drafted Cam Newton, Luke Keekley. But speculation continues as to why the Panthers fired Dave Gettleman yesterday. Linebacker Thomas Davis says it had nothing to do with his contract situation or Greg Olson's. It's really sad and, and disappointing for all of, the, all of the people that are saying that you know, the reason that Mr. Gettleman was released was because of me or Greg. Um, I think that's an unfair statement. I think that's something that um, you guys are giving us too much credit. You know, we, we're not that important um, in the grand scheme of things. And um, ultimately, you know, Mr. Richardson made a decision and, you know, it's something that we're all going to live with. Everybody should do an interview with Rapper's Delight in the background. <laughs> you picked up on that? Of course. Thomas Davis is one of the few Panthers, it seems like, to have something positive. Well, he's a current pa Panther. The yeah. former Panthers all had negative Michael Orr, too, backed him up. Too, yeah, he did. That's a good yeah. point. Out of the gate, you guys said the former players. That's the ex-girlfriends, right? <laughs> what are they ever going to say? They all got <laughs> fired. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So they feel some kind of way about it. Uh, look, people are still trying to figure out why was this done. Um, anything to add in terms of what is the reasoning, especially now, right before training camp, that you would get rid of a GM that had Dave Gettleman's track worker? Well, I'm not necessarily validating why it was done, but Thomas Davis, to an extent, is right. It wasn't all because of him and Greg Olson, but it did have to do with them, and it had to do with, collectively, the way that Dave Gettleman uh, ha has responded and acted in his role as general manager. It's something that Jerry Richardson quite frankly, did not want from the guy running his roster. But that's not new information. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not at all. And, and it goes back to Josh Norman. But when you cut Steve Smith and D'Angelo Williams and then you wind up in the Super Bowl in 2015, you can validate those departures. When you cut and rescind the franchise tag of Josh Norman and the next year your secondary falls off, then the internal chatter starts to... Develop. All right, but Gettleman inherited a poor cap situation. He inherited he a lot of talent, mm -hmm. but a poor cap situation from Marty Herney, who looks like he's in line to be the interim guy. So what difference is if he and Jerry Richardson put aside that make him acceptable as an interim guy? Is it strictly familiarity and somebody's got to do the job? In the, in and it is an interim role, yes. And, and you can point to some of those core players that were part of that 2015 team, but I'm going to say something that might be a slight defense of Gettleman. He acquired 41 of the 60 players on that 2015 mm -hmm. Super Bowl team. In three off seasons, yeah. so and like you said, he inherited a, a salary cap situation that Herney, in some capacity, put them in by a lot of these bolstered contracts, and that's exactly part of the reason why I think that Gettleman had to be such a cutthroat guy, and ultimately, it seems like that's what got him fired. So it's it's weird to me, and I don't really know that you can justify it for those reasons. You know who was cutthroat in a cool way, in a polite way? Kirk Cousins, bottom line oh, guy, so saying, you know what, this might be the, the way to go. Richard Sherman has talked recently about, hey, we got to strike if we want to get guaranteed deals. Sure. We were talking about Cousins' approach earlier, especially for quarterbacks. Could we see more players betting on themselves as opposed to falling for that whole NFL, hey, we got to take the security because it's the not-for-long league? Is this the wave of the future when it comes to player empowerment? It's, it's going to be something that players try to do. I don't think it's as easy as maybe we're trying to make it seem right now. Kirk Cousins fell into this situation. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know that many people around the league consider Cousins to be a top, what, 10 quarterback, just throwing it out there. Yet we're talking about him with this kind of money for a reason. What's the word? Word. Right, Leverage. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So the other he, word though is quarterback. But Le'Veon, <laughs> but again, Le'Veon's doing it too. Now maybe that just happens to be a coincidence, but Le'Veon's saying, hey, I'm undervalued. Our position is undervalued. I'm gonna bet on myself, even despite the injury history at running back. Well, those are two different situations. Yeah. I I don't think that Cousins is taking much of a risk right now because mm -hmm. Even with shortcomings this season, and I don't think he'll necessarily have all them, right. even if he has shortcomings, Kyle Shanahan will he look at suitors. it and say, Sean Jackson's gone, yeah. Pierre Garçon is gone, Sean McVay was yeah. gone, I'll make it right, Kirk, let's pay you. And he's going to have other suitors too, so he understands that it's not in his best interest right. to sign a deal that's below the amount of money he would make in these two years. You could also spit it as, I'm going to bet on myself when the team isn't giving you the kind of money they're giving Andrew I mean, Luck this, or somebody like that. I mean, this is like a dude, that. Mike, who went up to his former boss and Scott McClue and shook his head and said, how do you like me now? He doesn't exactly <laughs> right. seem like the type of guy who's scared of betting on himself. Real quick, any, uh, before we let you go, any movement on the Colin Kaepernick front? That was a rhetorical question. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, like, you know something I don't know? Haircut or not, it doesn't matter. 
I'm in Brian's hometown of Miami, and Miami just screams Brian. It's hot, it's steamy, there's something sexy about it. Sometimes it speaks to you in Spanish. I mean, this is Brian. Hi, baby. Bienvenidos a Miami. Oh, thank you. Thank Brian you. made a huge impression on me from the moment that I met him, but I thought it was too good to be true. Welcome to Miami. All right, now it'll be down to three contestants uh, by the time this airs. And Rachel Lindsay, The Bachelorette, I'm so glad you're joining us because the first time I laid eyes on Brian, I knew homie was going to make it. Look, I just have nothing but appreciation because he's fine. So Excuse myself. Y'all have y'all little things. Yeah, you, you did what you were supposed to do. And, and Rachel, if you can allow me real quick to humble brag. So at the ESPYs, when we were on the red carpet, I felt a little tap on my shoulder and it was her, mm -hmm. and she said, can I please take a picture with you? You made my entire ESPYs experience. So thank you again for joining us. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you for having me. You made my experience. I was so shocked you knew who I was. I really was. Do y'all want me to? You know, I, I, <laughs> Bye. I'm just, I'm just jealous. <laughs> jealous right now. That's all. But we'll just forget about you for yeah, a second, right, Mike. Right. As usual. <laughs> speaking of the ESPYs, um, of course, by now, uh, people know that you once dated Kevin Durant. Now, when Peyton Manning roasted KD, <laughs> did you cringe or did you laugh? I laughed. It was funny. I'm always going to laugh at a good joke. Um, I, I mean, I think, I think Kevin was laughing, too, on the inside. <laughs> somewhere down there. Some, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere. We just didn't see it. <laughs> now, you were also at Game 5 of the NBA Finals. Um, mm -hmm. Did you hit him with the, hey, big head, congratulations text? <laughs> like, 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 how did that go? <laughs> I didn't. I mean, I was there to support uh, the Warriors. I'm a fan. I'm, I'm happy he got his ring. But no, I didn't text him. We don't talk like that anymore. We're just friendly if we see each other in passing. Were you a Warriors fan before he went or you became a Warriors fan once he went there? That's a good question. When he went there. Okay. okay. I mean, you guys are friends. I, I, mean. I, sub, I support my Longhorns wherever they go. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. You're uh, also mm -hmm. from Dallas, so you're a big Cowboys fan. After Jamel, the second most important person you met at the ESPYs was none other than Dak Prescott. What was that like? That's right. I mean, I, I completely fangirled out. You know, I'm, I'm Cowboys Nation, you know, through the, the good times and the bad times. So when I saw him, I asked him for a picture. Um, I think he had no idea who I was, and that's fine. But um, I knew who he was. I got my picture, and I kept it moving. Well, that's Dak's fault that he didn't know who you were. Absolutely. Um, and since you're such a big fan of the Cowboys, obviously uh, you went to Texas. What would be a bigger mm -hmm. deal breaker for you, dating somebody who was a Washington Redskins fan or dating somebody Ooh. who was maybe an a and fan or Oklahoma <laughs> fan? Like, w which would be the bigger deal breaker for you? I'm going to say a Redskins fan. I'm going to say Redskins, yeah. I mean, I was a Sean Taylor fan back in the day, still am, honoring his memory, but I'd say Redskins. Well, but to bring it back, though, Rachel, KD's a Redskins fan. So, I, I mean, how'd that work? Maybe that's why we broke up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Your presence there was very significant on the show because you're the first African-American woman to be the Bachelorette. So yes. in your mind, uh, now that you've gone through it and you've seen everything that's been written and said, how, how do you feel about that? How significant is it? I mean, I honestly underestimated the significance of it before I went on the show. Like, I knew it was an honor. I knew there would be a lot of pressure. I knew that I would get positive feedback and negative. But honestly, I had to put all that aside and focus what it is, what, on what it is that I wanted for myself. Um, so I really haven't paid attention to the media because I don't want to have to clap back at people. I don't want to go there. I just want to, like, stay high. What, what did Michelle Obama say when they go low? I just want to stay high. And uh, that's what I'm just trying to do throughout this whole thing. Well, listen, uh, Rachel, I know for the rest of us, um, the viewing public, we're, we're still on, with you on this ride. Um, I can't wait to see how it all turns out. But, Me too. Uh, I definitely believe, based off your personality and the fact you had great taste in sports TV shows, right. that you, probably, right. you are going to find true love, and this is going to be such a happy ending for you. So thank you so much for joining us here on The Six. Thank you so much for supporting me. Talk to you guys later. Look, Mike, I know we already gave Nick Young the DTM Hall of Fame or inducted him in, but Conor McGregor and now the McGregor family, they could be in there too. Uh, his father, Tony, defended those who called his son a racist by saying Conor McGregor is not racist. This fight is not about race. This fight is about skill and technique. 
In fact, I don't think any fight is ever about race. Okay, the color of skin is immaterial. It's the victory that Connor is looking for. The fight itself may not be right. about race, but the, the promotion. The physical part, but, but the, the promotion oh, is they selling are, this. They part are of the selling sale. racial pornography the entire time. Okay, that's why Connor McGregor is making inappropriate references uh, to black women and other things that I can't say on this show. And even Floyd himself. I mean, that was part of the marketing. I'm not saying it's good, but if he's going to sit there and pretend as if that is not the elephant in the room that they're all playing up to, come on. That's just ridiculous. Some of the world, I ain't saying this is counter, but some of the world's biggest racists love to say how they're not racist. Most most racists don't walk around with racist t-shirts. Right. Nobody's saying, hey, I'm the racist. Yeah, you're right. You got me. Oklahoma State punter Zach Senor was a semi-finalist for the Ray Guy Award last year and is on the watch list this season. But he has his sights set a little bit higher. He is launching a Heisman campaign, even using a website, senorforheisman.com. Does he have your vote? Used to be a Heisman voter back in the day. Uh, Punters are back, by the way. Punters are back. Didn't Dan Fouts draft Ray Guy, fourth overall in the all-time draft on Monday morning quarterback? Marquette King and yeah. now this young man, they're bringing him back. Um, well, I would say the website was interesting because it looks like he made it on Netscape. Took it back there. <laughs> so you did. I mean, like, like prodigy or something. Like, what was that? Gotta <laughs> up your game a little bit. But I, I like the publicity. Uh, bizarre story. Cowboys receiver Lucky Whitehead said his dog Blitz was kidnapped and held for ransom, ten thousand uh, dollars. Blitz was returned last night after Whitehead paid an undisclosed amount of money. Okay. He said he contacted the police, but was told that the calls and texts couldn't be traced because they came from a burner phone. This sounded like the plot to Keanu. No, it sounded like the plot to Keanu. Oh, okay. I don't know if you saw that. I still haven't seen yeah. it. Yeah. But that's what it, so it's like a rapper or something? Yeah, it was like a rapper involved who said he he had the dog and he wanted the money. And I was like, so a rapper I'd never heard of, so no disrespect. So. Well, thankfully the dog's home. Yeah, that, that, it, it, it led to a happy ending, but. Holding it for ransom? Who, but who owns a dog for ransom? Like that's just. That's just trifling. ridiculous. That's a yeah, big, trifling. That was the word I was word looking, looking for, for, right? Really disappointed to see this guy leave my hometown. The Tigers have traded power hitting outfielder J.D. Martinez to Arizona for three prospects. The 29-year-old Martinez is batting 305, 16 homers, 39 RBI this season. The biggest bat on the market, Martinez joins a lineup that also includes Paul Goldschmidt mm. and Jake Lamb. He'll be a free agent after 2017. Remember when they got him off the scrap heap and he became a good move, though. You got to do that White Sox program, start rebuilding, getting those prospects. All right. Uh, one of my favorite stories of the day, uh, Julian Edelman received a letter from his English professor at the College of San Mateo uh, who apologized for doubting that he would make it to the NFL. It's problematic, though, that his English teacher he went a little comma crazy uh, during the, the mea culpa, but I don't think he owed him to do that. Misspelled disdain. Did it? Well, apparently, look, we're journalists. We're pretty good spellers. We, right. we make typos. All it happens is a typo. Yeah. But I appreciated it. And I appreciated Edelman sharing it. It's inspiring. A lot of people tell you what you can't do, including some people who are tasked with investing in you and supporting you. They don't do it very well. Pelicans, fly Pelicans. <laughs> Planning on having Rajon Rondo play the point. Drew Holiday play the two. So now they got two point guards, two big men. I'm not going to say two centers because Anthony Davis is the power forward, doggone it. Right. But uh, I don't know where else Rondo would play. But I do like the Rondo pickup nonetheless. I do. And then, look, they are in a position they have to do something. Uh, if you already got people looking at the Celtics going in. I was just going to bring that yeah. up. I mean, with those rumors that the Celtics, if things go south, that they will swoop in and take Anthony Davis. You don't want that to happen. Feels like, you know, his time there, it's been a bit of a waste. A lot of big blue flavor in the uh, So, Jeremy Lin said the Nets are making the playoffs. Which playoffs? Season. The NBA playoffs. Summer league playoffs? I mean, don't you, league playoffs? Do you at least admire him being confident? Like, what else is he supposed to say? Not that. <laughs> See, I hate, I hate what else he's supposed to say. How about nothing? How about don't nothing? Even I mean, I get it's the East. <laughs> right. And look, I like what he the like, Nets are doing. like, hell, we got a shot now. <laughs> I like where the Nets are going, but I mean, play, play up. I'm sorry, I'm shaming to do it. Nike. They got new NBA jerseys. Each team has four options. Will okay. not be obligated to wear white at home. See, it's too much new stuff. This What's wrong with that? Can we just keep some things sacred, please? Look, players want options these days. Okay. And you know they're doing you know this what? to make more Pretty money. Pretty soon, five of them go have five different jerseys. They just all dress how you want. Well, you sounded like old man get off my lawn. It's just for this. Two jerseys. Just That's this. it. Hold it away.
See, you sound like old woman get off my lawn. Like this woman almost got off the lawn oh. after taking one, Ooh. taking a comebacker. See, and a gender reveal. Look. More gender reveals. Keep them coming. But that's why they need to stop. No, they don't. Keep them coming. They're stupid. Find new and creative look. ways. Okay, fine. No, no, stop doing them. They're, 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 they're completely played now. This, I don't think so. And that's an accident happened. That's how accidents happen. All right, before we call it a day, tell the people we had a good day. All right, uh, Manu Ginobili, good day for Spurs fans. He turns 40 next week, and guess what? He's coming back for a 16th season. I More Euro it. stepping. When it was serenading with that standing ovation, I'm like, he's coming back. Right, because he wasn't like, looking oh, like man. he was on his way out of the door. That's Andre sure. Johnson is not coming back. One of the classiest and most productive players of his era, if not NFL history, the wide receiver, will be the first player inducted to the Houston Texans Ring of Honor ceremonies at halftime of the November 19th game against the Cardinals. Well That's it for us. More Sports Centers next. We will see y'all tomorrow. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer.